Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon to you all and a very warm welcome to Rugby World Cup 2023. How are you all? Ladies and gents, we've got three very special gentlemen to bring up on stage for you. We're going to introduce them one by one. I'm going to invite you to have a look at your screens as we welcome first of all a man who won the Premiership, he won Europe, he won the Grand Slam, he was England's code breaker in 2003. Here's a little reminder. And laid it, take, someone put the plug back in. Ladies and gents, it is the professor, the one and only Mr. Ben Kay. Come on up to you, Ben. Take the applause that is rightly yours. And there is a man who knows how to use a smartphone. Let's sit you in there. Lovely to see you. Welcome aboard. We'll bring you up a microphone as well. And as Ben gets himself comfortable, our second guest, ladies and gents, Undoubtedly, one of the most gifted players of his generation. He was the glue that held that England backline together. Once again, have a look at your screens. Ladies and gents, the man with class coursing through his veins is the one and only Will Greenwood! We're back again, we're back again. Tuck yourself in there. And as Will and Ben get themselves comfortable, last but not least, he doesn't really need much of an introduction other than he was the man who picked the lock for Johnny's drop. Once again, to your screens. On the streets again, rolling with my boys and my freaks again. Now we're coming across the track, watch your back. It's time for the maniac attack. I'm flipping the wall to the beach side. Hide if you fall on the wrong side. Cause I'm ready to roll your cage. Turn your page, rise for the dawn of a new age. Back with the faces, in with the boys. Yeah. Let's play some Once again, ladies and gents, an enormous round of applause, please, for England's controller, the one and only Mr. Matt Dawson. It's a hell of a boy band putting you lot back together. It's, it's take that, the one the years. Just before we get into all things World Cup, Will, and this team, they always talk about that look with the, with the Lions. When you, when you lot see each other, I know there's big egos at play and a long time since, but look, always fun. It, clearly, today and the next eight weeks is about this team, but you've asked me a direct question about what it's like to see these two, uh, and I never, uh, an immediate smile. Just awesome human beings. We had a lot of fun traveling around the world, beating everyone, uh, but also, learning about each other as humans. We spent a lot of time together since. We still spend a lot of time together now. And yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult. It's like having a lovely chat with two mates and just 600 people happen to be in the room. It's a genuine joy to see them every time. And we can reminisce about having hair, which yeah. was good fun. That does go back a bit, doesn't it? That does go back a bit. And for you, Matt, does it feel like yesterday, 03, or does it feel like another lifetime? I, I don't think it feels like 20 years, that, that's really? for sure. But I, I think that's because... Because I saw you on Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, no, it, it, we're, we're, we're lucky that the three of us, and there's, there's a good gang that see each other probably a little bit more regularly. Um, and it is, it's a it is a real shame that the whole group have only got together once. Um, in, in You're doing it again years. in November? We're doing it again in November. And I, I, I mean, that's... I, uh, no, the three of us and everyone else. Uh, uh, where, where's <laughs> my invite? Get invited for that? Ben? <laughs> ben has left the WhatsApp uh, group. Yeah, unfortunately. That, and that'll be uh, that'll be really special, really special. And it's difficult. Everyone's all over the world. They've got different jobs, etc. But um, it, it's um, it is a very, it's a very special thing. And because we're getting a bit old and grey or grey. The only thing I was thinking about was so there's a there's a big celebration going on on November the 22nd at the Hammersmith Apollo, I think, where we're all. We're also, but Lady Jane and Sir Clive have put an event on at Penny Hill Park on November the 25th. Have you been invited to that one, Benny? Yes. You've got that invite? Yeah. Uh, so all the players and all the coaching staff are together on November the 25th on a Saturday night, away from all the media, just a very, very private affair. The only thing I've considered is how many, how many lads have different wives? 
is genuinely the story. There are, I, I counted, I think there are eight people with new partners that you're meeting for the first time. It's like, oh, you're not Jane. How, what, Clive's not with Jane anymore? No, that, Otis oh, or oh, something oh. like that. But, you know, it's, that, that's the sort of thing that life just takes over. And you, you sort of imagine you'll go back and we will drop immediately back into caricatures and schoolboy. I will go back to being Shaggy or Rodney Trotter. Yeah, we'll all go back into Benny's favourite. Chuckle, Chuckle Brothers. Chuckle Brothers. Screech from Saved by the Bell, which is a particularly nasty one. Bit of Russ Abbott. Uh, Jimmy Will. Coco the Clown. Coco the Clown. I mean, I literally just picked up nicknames. I don't know what else I did. But it's, that, it's a fascinating thing that we will immediately go in and, and with us is some new, new additions. If you could plug something from your squad in 2003 into this slot right here, right now, what would it be? The ability to change a style of play mid-game rather than wait for a Monday review to be released enough, to be empowered enough, to feel as though that you can feel something on the field that the coaches can't see, that you can feel something that's taking place that data isn't actually telling this group. I think there's a lot of data going around and it's black and white and it's right there, but actually you've got to allow the players to go, look, I understand that, but let's talk about aug augmented data and go, we're the ones who are actually playing this, we're the ones who are dodging South Africans or Argentinians who are flying at us at full tilt. And the move that was set up on a Wednesday that looks perfect on a piece of paper, on a whiteboard, isn't currently working. We're just going to tweak it slightly. We're going to slide down and without getting overly technical, we'll change the line-out call. We'll go to five men. We've been training six men. In the back line, we've been running. We've been trying to hit the 10-12 channel. They've shored it up. They've moved Matera to defend at eight, at 10. Right, let's change it. Let's go somewhere else. And I, I genuinely think the greatest strength, I, it's a phrase I use quite a lot. I think our team weren't the greatest team, weren't the greatest athletes, but we were the greatest wagon circlers in the business. We had the ability when there was all sorts, and I talk about sort of cowboys and Indians film from the old days, and if you go off on ones and twos, which, which is heroic and ambitious and enthusiastic, you tend to pick off. But actually, if you flip the wagons, get in and have a chat, slow the game down, work out what to do, get three or four key people of whom these two were two of them, decide how to change it, then, then that's what our greatest strength was. It wasn't that we scored a million tries, we printed drop goals, we could just work out how to get, I know it sounds supremely obvious, how to get more points than you when the final whistle went. And it might be a dog fight, a knife fight, a wired game, a kicking game, a running game, a mauling game, a short yardage game with Ben Cohen. That's what was so special about that team because it had an ability just to change and go, if we carry on playing like this, we go home tomorrow morning. And that's what this side, which is difficult because it's new, this side hasn't yet got, but has the ability over four weeks to try and accumulate. So the other thing that somebody asked me earlier that they wanted to know for each of the three of you as they came in, where is the medal? Uh, it's in the bank. It's in the bank? Yeah, we got burgled. We got burgled after the... Um... He says in the bank. It's being used as security against a lot of money he owes. <laughs> He's leveraged to the hilt, <laughs> hoping he, he saw what Maradona's shirt went for. He yeah. thought, I'll have a... Do you I'll... accept visa? No. <laughs> Medal? <laughs> yeah, I lost all the, all the photos and um, video camera from the, the procession at Trafalgar Square. But they didn't take my medal, so I was like, I'm not taking any risks here. I'll put the so, medal in the bank. Weirdly, you, you, you keep things that mean a little from you. Uh, obviously, shirt got the medal but I've got the account card from Cargo Bar still yeah I've still got the account card which was a you got a, we got a free bar that night and they gave me a card so I was so the, the weird things you keep just go that what a little memento so I've got the account card so See, from those Sambucas from that card. you're trying bar. to make out that that's all sentimental I've got the account card I'm gonna you go. are the tightest person I know you've only kept it in case you go back you can try and use it again yeah uh, all in behind Greenwood in four years' time. I, where's where's, got, where's I, yours? I, I, well, I'm now, you know, like sometimes, you, what do I do with my wallet? I'm not, because I do know where mine is. I think it's, we've got a gun cabinet at home. It's in the gun cabinet, but I haven't opened the box for 19 years. And like, my sons are quite intuitive. I, I they could have easily nicked it and eBayed it, and, and I wouldn't know because I haven't looked at it. Where's yours? Uh, s s sock drawer. Is it really? It is, it yeah. is in the sock drawer. Yeah. No burglars going in there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I say, I, say my, I say mine was in the bank. It's in the same bank as Jason Leonard's. 
and I went to get it a few years ago. Zurich, and, is it Zurich? <laughs> and <laughs> Panama. As I, as I opened, as I opened the the whatever it is, the case, and pulled the ribbon to have a look at it, the whole th thing fell apart. You know, no. the, the front of it came off and the back of it came off. I was like, oh my God, what's gone on there? And so I had to you know, fill in the form or the rest of it for damaged goods. Anyway, massive inquiry. And Jason had been going to the bank. Oh, this is going to end badly. And taking my medal to all the schools and everywhere. Oh. And all the kids were picking up, like doing like big, putting it on, smashed it to bits, and then he just very carefully just put it back. And they just put it back in the bank. He, he is so wrong. <laughs> it is frightening, isn't it? I, I heard him tell a story once that he's never ever moved so fast in 21 years of playing for England than the time that he saw his kids holding it over the loo as he walked in to get it. And so he had to dive in full sort of Jason Leonard acrobatics to save his medal from being flushed into the waste away water. Anyway, story of another day. We have, and I've never seen one of these before, it is a big mic ball, which is a rugby ball with a microphone in it. Hello, Will. In fact, Greens, I'll give that to you. So have any of you got any questions you would like to put to our esteemed panel? Anything we haven't covered you'd like to get into? Stick a hand up, and Greens is going to fling you with his 14 points. Both hands up, sir. Mind your heads, ladies. Could go anywhere. It's an interactive show. So speak into the black dot, and we'll answer your question. Which of you was the better player in 2003? Very good question. Oh, I can't throw that. I will, I will go, I was third. So oh, they can fight on, it out. Really, um, what are we talking, rugby or something else? Oh, right, uh, uh, did you win that? I, think, I, bet, uh, I mean, the real answer is probably Ben K. Yeah, I mean, Ben, ben is the obvious choice, but then anyone who misses an open goal, you can't give him man of the match, can you? I'll cross him, yeah. you not as So it's down to two. But, but how is yeah. your pass? <laughs> and when we were helping, when we were helping Ben get off the ground, no, no one said a word, he just grabbed, Jono grabbed him by the scruff of the neck. I remember go up to him and gave him a little tap on the backside, get back into the scrum, next job, next job. What did Will, what did you do, what did you, what well, was your I'll let, words I'll of encouragement? To make sure, and no one likes to, you know, self-praise is no praise. Yeah. So Ben, you can perhaps tell the story of what So yes, yeah, Steve Thompson, my buddy, first one picked me up. Don't worry, just concentrate on the next line out, otherwise my game will fall apart, just get the line out call. Dawes, get me, keep running the lines, I'll try and get you another opportunity. Martin Johnson, brilliant captain. Just take all that frustration out on those yellow jerseys. Every ruck you hit, Neil Back, our defensive captain. Tackle, tackle, I'm starting to feel great. And then, I kid you not, this fella was the 14th and final person to come up to me. Probably got the honesty balance that we had in the team slightly wrong when he said, that is going to haunt you for the rest of your life. <laughs> You know, of the 14 people, who spoke truth? Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> and how often do you get asked about it? Yeah, quite a lot. Yeah. Like, it's, probably, like, it's probably reduced down a little bit now to like six times a day. You know, I don't think you got enough deals on the back of that, did you? Remember like Jonah running over Tony and Catty? I got pizza. I got a year, year supply of pizza. Because I you? mentioned them in a Five Live interview. How much does it annoy you that everybody talks about Wilkinson and Johnson and not about the squad? Oh, interesting question. Uh, I think you said, just to clarify, you said, how much does it annoy us that people talk about Wilkinson and Johnson all the time? In no way, shape or form, remotely whatsoever. Uh, Wilkinson, Johnny changed the way we train and took us to a place we probably wouldn't have got to on ourselves. And I think most of us, I, I might, don't want to put words into these mouths, would say Jono was the greatest leader we ever had and we would follow him absolutely everywhere and he deserves absolutely every word of praise he ever gets. But to be fair, it, Will's right, it didn't annoy us, but it annoyed our bank managers. God, you wouldn't believe it. Dawes has to, had to give them his medal and everything. What was your relationship like with Jono? I mean, you've spent more time arm in arm with him than, than most. Yeah, not just on the field. Um, <laughs> no, good, like Jono, because he looks 
like um, Ferengi, the leader of the Klingons in Star Trek. Everyone thinks he's really grumpy, but he's actually genuinely a really fun person to be around. And, you know, he, he loves the crack. So, yeah, look, there was a serious top side to Jono, which the referees would see when the finger came out, and, and, like that on the field. Uh, but, but off the field, he, he was he, he perfect leader. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you one of the reasons he was a perfect leader. It's because often captains plan what they're going to say, and it's all, it feels a bit calculated. There'd be times, so World Cup final, we're about to run out for the game. We get to the uh, opening of the tunnel to, to run out. And usually he'd turn around and say, you know, nothing Churchillian, but he'd say something just for that, like, you know, don't get many opportunities like this, just make sure we take them. Something just, that, and he turned around on the final and just ran off because he knew, and he said afterwards, there was nothing I was going to say that was going to make a blind bit of difference. And if I was going to say something, it would have been purely for my own good, nothing for you. So often captains don't know when to shut up. Our three incredible World Cup winners from 20 years ago. The one and only Matt Dawson, the incomparable Will Greenwood, and the absolutely sensational Ben Kay. Give him a cheer, ladies and gents. On three for Will and his social media. Are we live? Ladies and gentlemen, one, two, three, Will Greenwood!